once again, thank you for tuning in to Knowledge for Life's uh, Objective Overview. And we are here at the 14th Annual Black Man's Think Tank Conference. And we have a very special guest on our uh, program today, Mr. Kevin Powell, who is an author, an activist, and lecturer. Um, you've been on TV shows on Oprah. Um, and, and so, of your experiences in, in your travels uh, and, and writing the books, what have you seen out of the black community as far as, you know, the call and response from your from your books and from your lectures uh, dealing with the black community? Wow, it's a great question. First of all, it's an honor to be here. Thank you so much to be a part of this. I'm so happy to be in the city of Dayton. And what I saw is something like I saw today here at this conference. We had a powerful conversation. As I said, you know, I was honored and humbled that I was asked to be a speaker here to close out. But what was more important to me was the community dialogue we had after. I call them a healing and co-counseling sessions. And you heard one black male after another, as well as black women who are uh, raising sons, talk about not just the challenges, but we shared practical solutions and action steps with each other. Everything from the importance of uh, self-love and knowing our history, uh, to, to the need for counseling, the need for spiritual development, um, uh, the need for, for more of us males to show up and, and, and be uh, alternative examples of manhood away from the destructive stuff that so many of our brothers uh, uh, see on a regular basis or here in the media, mass media culture. Uh, um, the need for more shows like this show where you see black men talking about positive, uplifting stuff. And so it was, it was this, this is what I see around the country actually. Uh, there was an 18 year old brother here who asked if uh, I had hope. And I said, brother, I have hope just because you're here and that we're all here together. And, um, you know, I was raised by a single mother and brother, and uh, my father was not in my life, and I grew up very poor, as I said. And I certainly engaged in a lot of destructive behavior, uh, violence, uh, past years, battles with, with liquor and things like that, which is why I'm very health conscious and a vegan now. And I just really believe that, um, you know, if you can have a support structure around you, know, we got to do this for our communities. Uh, folks kept saying we got to bring our communities together. So many of our brothers are crying out for help. And the worst thing we can do is just uh, just not even listen to those calls, you know. So I feel like that's my work, that's your work, and that's the work of us who show up for things like this. Now, um, you, you spoke just a few moments ago about your transformation. Yes, sir. And, 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 you know, I have to wonder because I think as black males, you know, we grow up in this decadent, really decadent society, more decadent today yes, sir. <laughs> than ever before. Yes, sir. Because they talked about even bullying where you can't escape it because now yeah. when you come home, you still have Facebook and yeah. social networks. Yes, sir. So my question is, is that you, at what point um, do you think that you reached that uh, point where you began to, as you said, become a vegan? So you did a total 180? It was a process. You know, as I said in my presentation, uh, it started when I got to college because of a financial aid package and we didn't have no money. Yeah. And I was introduced to, uh, back in the day, uh, the Nation of Islam, to black history books, um, you know, to the civil rights movement in a holistic way with things I didn't know about. All I knew was Dr. King had a dream and I didn't know what the dream was, to be honest with you. And as I learned my history and, and I began to look at myself very differently, that was the first step because I realized, you know, I wasn't just a slave. I'm not just an ex-slave, you know. I'm not just a victim of, of American racism. There's actually a whole history that existed way before we got to America. That was important for me. Um, so it was a gradual process. And as I've said many times, you just don't erase 18, 19, 20 years of self-hatred in, in a couple of years of reading some books. And it's been a journey, brother. I mean, I had a lot of wounds I had to deal with. You know, the father absence, the relationship with my mom's, uh, the, the wounds of poverty. You know what I'm saying? Um, and But one of the things I've always been about is, is constant transparency and, and being open um, about my journey. Uh, I've made a lot of mistakes that have fallen down. Certainly, uh, you know, violence all around my life. And it, you know, there's been little things that have been said to me along the way. I believe the angel has said to us. There was a sister who said to me years back, you know, because I, I, was, I, was, I was a bad boy, man. And she said, Kevin, you got to stop being an entertainer for other people. Because I would just show out. You know how brothers do now? I might show up, but you know, I mean, one of the one, one of the my brothers described himself. He said, I was savage. Well, I can say that I was certainly engaging in savage-like behavior as well. And, um, but 
when you realize that there are younger people looking at you, at a certain point I say, you know, I can't bring my father back to me, but the thing I can be, brother, is a father figure for me who always will look at you something, you know what I mean? And if I'm out to act in a fool, then I'm no different than, you know, who I'm complaining about not being in my life. And, and those little moments, you know, self-reflection, critical self-reflection are so necessary. Otherwise, we don't grow as men. And I just said, I want to be a man. I want to be a boy my whole life. And as you know, there are boys who are 20, 30, 40, 50 years old. I want to be a grown man. And it comes with a lot of responsibilities. And especially if you decide to put yourself out there as a writer, as an activist, as a media personality, whatever we do, you've got to know that someone wants to right. you know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Yes, and, and, and you, um, you talk about you know that that period of when we're all out there yes, sir. and because of a lack of knowledge of self yes, we don't really we don't really understand how we are how our actions are impacting our lives yes, um, and I guess that's something that, that, that we all do. now now you authored a number of different books. 11 I'm working on my 12th one right now <laughs> and your 12th one I think is coming out in two, uh, 2016 15 right? next year the next year it's a memoir about my life and one after in 2016 is about two books okay and both books are obviously about black males and the difficulties of being a black male in America uh, I gotta tell you the one I'm working on about my own life uh, it's in the spirit of like Richard Wright's black boy Nathan uh, McCall's maybe want to holler and it's from age 3 into my 40s where I'm at now okay and brother <laughs> yeah I was a mess. My old mama used to say to me, and I quote her in the book saying, Boy, I don't know if you're going to make it, you know. Um, here I was, four grams in three high schools, um, getting in trouble on the streets and things like that. But I was a good student. I was a really good student. My mother did not tell me bad grades. Education really was critical. Um, the difference was, when I look at a lot of young brothers today, I had sports. I played baseball for 10, 12 years. I ran track all four years in high school. And it was after school programs. And my mother put me in a library at eight years of age. She's like, you got to be around books. And so she really had planted the seeds that there was something else out there. And I really believe that and God saved my life. You know, so. and, and you know, you talked about, there's a saying that confession yes, sir. is good for the soul. Yes, sir. And you, you confessed a lot of things. And I think that, you know, you write books not just from a research no, uh, 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 perspective, but but from a life experience, yeah, yeah, yeah. and I think that you can connect with uh, young black males more than those who have done research, even though there are some good authors out yeah. there. But you know the pain, you know, you know. That's right. And it, you know, it, it's interesting because I didn't know that black male writers existed when I was growing up. <laughs> The wonderful educational system. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's amazing. And so when I started reading those books by black male writers specifically, it was like I was finally looking in the mirror at myself. Because I mean, yeah, I dug Shakespeare, I dug some of the other writers that I grew up with, but like, I could not directly relate to these writers, man. Uh, it impacted my life. I remember sometimes I would get down and look for a black male writer at 18, 19, 20 years old. I would just start crying, bro. Mm. You know, that's how, how much they hit my soul. What are some of the, uh, aside from yourself, because uh, we definitely want them to pick up your book. I appreciate it. And uh, what are some of the other authors that you would suggest that young black men start with? Well, gosh, I think first and foremost, you got uh, Richard Wright, mm. Langston Hughes, Amir Baraka, Audubon and Malcolm X, George Jackson, Saul Dead Brother, mm. uh, Claude Brown's Man Child in the Promised Land. Uh, you know, man, the, the, you know, I just, Paul Lawrence Dunbar, since we're here in Dayton, Ohio, you yes. know. Yeah. Um, Man, I just, I just think that no matter who you are, you should see yourself in history. You should see your reality out there. Otherwise, you're going to think you're, you, you're nothing. I had a young brother that just out the day in New York. We had a community program just like we had in Dayton. 14 years old, his mother dropped him off at the forum we were doing. I said, what you want to do with your life? I always ask young brothers and sisters that. He said, I want to be an astronaut. And before I could say, man, that's incredible. You know what he said to me? He said, but I know it's not going to happen. I said, why do you say that? He said, I don't know. I started asking him about black scientists. He didn't know any of them existed. So I said, you need to know Benjamin Manneke. You need to know who uh, 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 Ronald McNair was. You know, black astronaut. You know what I'm saying? He said, I never heard of them. I said, well, we're going to make sure you hear about it. Right, right. You know what I, mean? I have a few more questions because I don't want to hold you. Yes, sir. You just, but you, you, you touch on a very good point, and it, it, it's a very critical point. Yes, sir. And that is, is that, number one, the educational system yes. is not educating us. Uh, number two, we have this media that we're not even exposed 
to these figures that you're talking about. We don't even know that they're black uh, astronauts. Some of us don't, may not even know that they're black doctors, black right. lawyers. What, what do you say about a system like this? Um, you know, is would you say that this is uh, a conspiracy? Or do you think that this is just a part of white culture, uh, dominant, dominant culture that just neglects uh, us? And what should be our response? I say that any system that does not teach you about the contributions of all people to that system of society is uh, inherently inhuman and destructive. Because if people who are learning nothing but self-hatred, and that they're invisible, and their lives don't matter, and that they're not equals, and they don't deserve some sense of, uh, of justice or freedom in, 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 in those different forms, there's something wrong with that. I hated myself the first 18 years of my life. I can't stress that enough. I hated myself the first 18 years of my life. Why? Kindergarten to the 12th grade, all I learned, black folks were slaves. Uh, like I said, Dr. King had a dream. I didn't know what it was. I didn't know this man lived another five years and he did a whole bunch of other stuff. Uh, I didn't learn about the civil rights movement at all. Uh, I learned about Rosa Parks. I learned about Jackie Robinson. And I booked a watching. I was like, oh yeah, that's a black man that messed around with peanuts. That's all I knew. That's it. And I mean, if you don't, if you don't learn about it, and so you, you become by default, mm -hmm. and, and, and I GGA, because mm -hmm. that's what's been created for you to be. And so, uh, I've gone to uh, schools that are the best public schools, private schools, and I've gone to some of the so-called uh, under-performing uh, schools. And to me, a miseducation is a miseducation, whether you pay for it, you got it for free, <laughs> if you don't learn about yourself. And so, I... Um, I'm big on that. That's why yeah. when I got up today, I said, you know, right off the bat, I'm an African. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm clear where I come from. I'm clear where our ancestry came from, you know. Uh, and it makes all the difference in the world. When I speak now, and I see this around the country, and as you said, it's, the educational system is not just, uh, uh, you know, school. It's the mass media culture. How many times do we see brothers, how many, where was ABC, NBC, CBS for this gathering today? All these positive black males. But we would have engaged in a fight up in here. Oh, exactly. The cameras would have been here. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Well, this is why we're glad that you're here because we have to be in these spaces as alternative media. Absolutely. You know, and so uh, people can say conspiratorial is a conspiracy, is an evil. I'll just say, you know, you do the math. Right. Y'all do the math. Where are you are, where are you in all of this? And why do you see the same images over and over again? You know? Um, and I think that um, I actually, I'll put it to you like this. I can't tell you how many people have said to me, uh, white sisters and brothers well-meaning, and even some bourgeois black sisters and brothers, it's amazing how well-spoken you are. Mm. I'm like, what am I supposed to be? You know what I mean? Right, exactly. You know, um, and I just think that, uh, that is an insult, you know what I mean? Because here we, here they, we profess that America is the most civilized, uh, society uh, in the world. Yes, uh, we hear the presidents uh, talk about this um, manifest destiny and all these type of things. But yet, you know, at the same time, individuals will ask you such a disrespectful question, you know, or comment. Yeah, yeah, yeah comment. I've got a well spoken, you're not like the rest of them. I'm like, well, I'm, I am them. <laughs> and they are me. How about that? And, and uh, I just think that in spite of all the incremental pro progress that has been made since the civil rights era, we are lying to ourselves to think that we live in a post racial society. The kind of society we should actually want to live in is a post racism society where you see me as a human being and not going to say stuff like, well, you speak so well, or you're not like the rest of them or you get preferential treatment because you get to be in certain circles. My thing, that's where I go, I talk about poor folks. Mm -hmm. That's where I'm poor folks. I'm like, you know, I come from poverty, most of my family's poor. Why would I, just because I went to college and got a few books under my belt and a little nice little resume, think that I'm somehow separate from the masses of my people? As long as the masses of my people are not doing well, then I'm not doing well. You know, that's how I feel. And the problem that has happened, in my opinion, brother, and sister, civil rights era, not only has there been a constant uh, barrage of omission of us in the textbooks and, and these continually destructive images of us in the mass media culture, mm -hmm. but you actually have people who believe, you know, that everything is so well now. Mm -hmm. Well, look at our communities, you know, and, and look at what our young people are dealing with. I heard some of the testimonies here today mm -hmm. about what's going on with some of these young black males. I mean, imagine, uh, 
if they didn't even have hip hop, and I got a lot of criticism of hip hop, the industry, obviously, mm -hmm. but the other side of it is that it's actually employed a number of young black males in a way that none of these other folks, politicians, government folks, you know, have not. And so there's so much work that we have to do to empower our communities, and a lot of it has to come back to the basic principles of, of you know, everyone from Booker T. Washington to Donald Blige Mama, do for self. Yeah. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Do for self. And, and so to end it, um, I want to just, uh, you, you can sum it up in two questions. Yes, sir. One is where do you see us going from here right. uh, as a people? Yes, sir. And if you could uh, let us know where you're going from here and a little bit about yourself and how uh, individuals can contact you. Well, I'm going where, you, where we go. Okay. So we're moving, and I, I know we're going to go forward. I, look, I, I did not come from tremendous poverty, mm -hmm. single mother, absent father, poor grandparents, uh, you know, destitution, you know. Uh, uh, you know, as Drake says in one of his rap songs, started from the bottom, now we're here. And um, I'm not going backwards. And I have bottomless hope in our communities in spite of everything. Because I'm like, if we can supply being kidnapped from Africa, the middle passage, slavery, segregation, the crack era, I know that we can survive this. We have it in us, you know what I mean? If we can create uh, the single most important music form in America, which is really the most important music form on the planet, I know we have it in us, you know. Uh, if that brother that was sitting here from Nation of Islam, I can't think of his name right now, to say that he came from being a savage, mm. you know, to who he is today, I know that we have it in us. Yeah. So I refuse to lose, I refuse to have uh, anything but hope in our people. Let me give you an example. I was speaking at a conference just like this for black males in Florida about two or three years ago. The woman who spoke before me didn't mean any harm, but it was a whole group of young black men in the audience, and she listed every negative statistic that black males face. And you know, when I got up, I said, you know what? If that would have been said to me when I was 12, 13, 14 years old, I would have just gave up. Right. And so I said, first thing we can do is say that we are pyramid builders. That's right. The name of this conference here in Dayton. Yes. We are geniuses. Mm -hmm. And how dare you tell us what we cannot do? You know what I'm saying? That's right. And so I, I have hope. And so my, my journey is inextricably linked to black people. I do not separate from black people. You know, do I want to do well as a writer? Yeah. Do I want to continue to speak in different places? Do I want to uh, make sure that my family is taken care of in a basic way? Absolutely. But um, I, I am about our communities. And, and I, I just, I, I got to keep saying it. I will never, never, never separate myself from the masses of people. You know, when our people feel something, I feel it. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? And that's that's human. That's yes, being a, a, a weight. It's being alive. It's being conscious. Yes, sir. That's how we should. That's how we should all feel. Yes, sir. And if we don't have that feeling, yes, I think that we're still in 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 the spiritual sense. We're, we're still dead. Yes, sir. And I don't want to be dead, and I don't want any of us to be dead, sir. And so our lives should be about getting as many people as possible, like Lazarus, to raise up from the dead. Yes, so sir. that's what I'm about. And please give the, the audience how they can contact yes, you. Yes, sir. And um, any projects that or any places that you may be going in the future. Yes, sir. Well, folks can email me at Kevin at KevinPowell.net. Kevin at KevinPowell.net. My Twitter is uh, Kevin underscore Powell. Twitter underscore Kevin underscore Powell. Then I'm on Facebook, Kevin Powell in Brooklyn. Kevin Powell in Brooklyn. Our office number back in New York is 718-399-8149. 718-399-8149. And if I may, can I shout out our organization, Please. BK Nation, uh, bknation.org. BK stands for Building Knowledge. And we're really about everything we were just talking about. Yeah. How do we share information, resources, and services with our communities? And, and the website is growing. And this is very serious work to us. And I, I look forward to being back in Ohio again Absolutely. soon. Absolutely. I want to... Uh, look forward to interviewing you in the future. Yes, sir. I have to make a small disclaimer that I'm a Twitter follower okay. <laughs> of right. yours, and uh, you have a very excellent right. website thank too. You, sir. Very appreciate it. Website. Thank you. And so we want to thank you for your time. Appreciate it. Uh, and before we go, is there anything you want to say to young black men who might be feeling the pressure of the society? Well, what I would say to young brothers out there, young black males out there, number one. Um, you gotta love yourself. You gotta love yourself. Know that you are a genius. You are a genius. You are a genius. Even if you gotta say that to yourself every single day until it starts seeping through your bones and your flesh, you gotta believe that. You come from the, the creators of civilization. You know, you come from the creators of everything from spirituals and blues to hip hop. Um, you created something called basketball, which is really an African ballet. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, I just. 
I, I want you all to read and study and travel. Even if you got to get on a Greyhound bus and go somewhere you've never been, you got to see this country, you got to see this world. Um, I want you all to have a plan for your lives. You know, you can't just survive. You got to ask yourself, okay, what am I doing to win? Because there's a difference between surviving. We've been surviving in America for 400 years, but there's a certain kind of instinct that you need to have kick in where you learn how to win. You can't do that without a game plan. Let's bring it back to sports. You know, when the Seattle Seahawks came out there and, and put that, that beat down on the Denver Broncos, it's because they had a game plan on offense and defense that confused the heck out of the Denver Broncos. Much respect to Peyton Manning and the Denver Broncos, but their plan wasn't as strong as the Seahawks this year. You feel what I'm saying? So, brothers, we gotta have a plan, and then you gotta surround yourself with people who are as smart as you, and or smarter than you, who also have a plan. If none of y'all ain't got a plan, then guess what? Life is not, it's gonna be you on that corner. It ain't gotta just be a physical corner. Your whole life will just be a street corner where everything's just passing you by. And as a brother who used to be on that street corner myself, as a brother who used to, you know, who was so bored, we would just throw stuff in a garbage can and set it on fire. That has a short lifespan. At a certain point, something will happen to you out there in those streets if you ain't got no plan for yourself. You know what I mean? And we gotta practice love toward each other. We are not N-I-G-G-A, we are not N-I-G-G-D-R-S's, we are black men, we are brothers, we are family. And when you shoot or stab or fight or curse out or beef with another brother, it's like smashing the mirror. You're you doing it to yourself. That's called profound self-hatred. Either you're about self-love or you're about self-hatred. There's no gray area. You love us or you hate us. Which one are you, which side are you gonna be on? Mm -hmm. Thank you, Brother Kevin. Thank you, sir. Appreciate that. Yes, sir. And uh, this is Brother Steve Muhammad with Knowledge for Life. We just heard from our brother, who once again is an activist, an author, uh, a lecturer, an all-around beautiful brother. Praise and we God. want to uh, sign off and wish everyone who is watching, may God continue to bless you and your family.